Um, some people have said that um, the nature of our democracy is such that the center is too powerful. And at every point, uh, the governor's position is too powerful, the president's position is too powerful, that power should devolve from the center, go to the states, so that the states can actually grow at their own pace. There's no going to Abuja to go and collect money, that that will help our development more. What would you say to people who say that? But, you know, the Bible says that if you are faithful in every two things, greater things will be entrusted to you. you know, uh, this is a country where councillor has more power than he ought to have. Local government chairman has more power than mm -hmm. he ought to have. Mm -hmm. uh, governor has more power than he ought to have. Uh, president, presumably, more power than he ought to have. This is a carryover of what I was talking about. That military. The mind of the dictator has still not left us. And politics as state capture. Uh, it's still really dominant in our minds. Because, of course, because of the way we see power, which is over literally, uh, you know, there's a classical distinction between power over and power for. Now, if you have power over somebody, then you are concerned with what you do. You can threaten, I can send you to prison. But power for is also, you can use it positively to say, this is power for achieving good. Now, it is not, again, it's not so much what the Constitution says, because almost 70, 80% or 90% of Nigerians haven't read the Constitution anyway. Mm -hmm. And the truth of the matter is that we're not literally being governed by the Constitution. Now, in my view, what is going to happen, and I think that a lot of the states from the conversation, from the things I hear, um, and I don't want to name states, but I've had governors talk, and... Um, the very fact that many governors are feeling economically independent as a result not of the check from Abuja but from the internally generated revenue. The very fact that people are seeing a qualitative change in their lives as a result of the openness. Uh, I listened to one of your governors yesterday on your program talking about what is happening and how much he wants to focus on tourism and so on. So, but in my view, it is not so much a question of what on paper is said about where the checks are going to. Presently, as things stand, we, we get the impression you have to go to Abuja to collect a check. Now, what happens to that check? We're not part of that conversation. Based on my education, right? based on my education, I don't know what the check looks like, even at the local government level. And we're not even coming anywhere close to that. So, no governor is going to make people feel convinced that they need to join this fight. But the day a governor comes with a chair and says, my brothers, and this is what we've gotten from Abuja. How are we going to make use of it? Or local government chairman says, this is what we've got, this is what we've gotten from Abuja. How are we going to do, you know, you know, you know, what are we going to do with it? Then people can feel a sense that they maybe we are part of this conversation. But to the extent that everything that happens to you in Nigeria, a small room is tied to your village because you know somebody. You have water, it's because a big man has spoken to another big man. Mm. So Abuja doesn't have the kind of attraction it ought to have. It's a force of intimidation. If you tell somebody you've gone to Abuja, I get telephone calls from people. When I call my friends in Abuja, the first thing they say, Bishop, are you in town? I say, yes, I'm in town. Where are you? I said, I'm in, I'm in my house. They say, what do you mean? I said, I'm in, in town. They just assume. When they say, when Abuja person says, are you in town? Are you in Abuja? <laughs> I said, Chukuku is a town too now. <laughs> so, the resonance of Abuja is a force of intimidation. They can take over here and go to China. They tell you why we are going to Abuja. And the air of expectancy is that if you go to Abuja, you won't come back empty-handed. So, it's a collective thing. <laughs> and this is why, for me, it's not about whether you decentralize or the, the center becomes less powerful and uh, so on and so forth. That, let me give you a practical example. A friend of mine, he told me, he said, look, you know, I'm a Democrat. This is a true story. Unfortunately, he's dead now. He said, he had, four, he had five children. And he said, I've decided my children, my wife and I, we want these children to grow up properly, to be able to make a choice. So we now decide whatever we want to do in the house, want to buy a new television, we need to have a round table. That's what I'm doing, I'm doing in my house. So I sit down with my kids, we have a round table. 
everything you need to do with this course. So I, I, I really commended him. Then one day he came to my house. I said, how's the round table? He said, I've suspended it. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, his son wasn't doing well in the school, and he decided to move the child to another school. And he told the son, he said, look, you know, when you resume, you are going to go to, because you are not, I noticed you falling into bad company. And the son said, no, dad, we can't, you can't do that. We have to have a round table. Yeah, of course. And he said, he knew that this children <laughs> of mobilizing siblings against you. And so he said, no more round table. <laughs> what I'm saying is, there's nobody who has power that's going to give it away willingly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And right now, the power of an office holder in Nigeria, whether it's president, whether it's governor, whether it's mm -hmm. senator, mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's a numbers. And as I said, because of the huge resources that this country has, these are not things people can give up by just moral exhortation. How we structure the fight must be related to the evidence that the little we have, we are doing it, we are using it judiciously. If local government chairman needs to be accountable and people can see, they will encourage him, encourage the same governor to develop more power. If the governor is, is more effective and people can see, they will be behind him if he says he wants a bigger check from Abuja. But for now, as I said, Nigeria just, you know, consider that what, what we are told is what is. Now, whether we can continue on that route is a completely different matter. Also. And I think this is where those of us that have, quote unquote, gone to school should become a bit more relevant. Because, Tom, you know, the Congo is well. She's done, she's done a fantastic job. First time when she came and second time. That is, I am not assessing her economic performance, no, but that She's able to give us this information. You can go and see how much money your local government or your state has collected. But how many of us look at those documents and what can we do with it? Because for me, that was a major contribution to how we as ordinary citizens can begin to engage you know, public office holders. Thank you very much, Bishop. So on that note, tomorrow, yeah. we have to wrap up. Okay, I'd just like to say thank you very much to Bishop Matthew Cooker. Bishop of Sokoto. Thank you very much for coming to share uh, your time and our time in Sokoto. Thank you very much. Thank you very Thank much. You.